Yo, what is going on, guys? Revised here. Thanks for watching. So, I got a request um, on how do you make a FPS style menu. Well, uh, now I'm not sure if this person was wondering about like the making the GUIs or scripting it. But if I were to script the GUIs uh, to make it actually work, like go to loadout and then from loadout you can create your classes. I'm not sure on how to do that with my FPS game that I created a while back. Uh, well, I haven't been working on it much at all, but uh, uh, I, I'm not sure how to script the loadout and stuff. Uh, but what I do know how to script, and I'm guessing is this is what you're talking about. Um, so when I start the game, now it's gonna be a little laggy. Uh, how my uh, menu pops up, but then I think what you're talking about is whenever I hover. It's pretty laggy. Whenever I hover over it, um, it slides in, and it also has a sound effect. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to make the um, effect of it coming out like this, which I think is pretty. So we're gonna go to Start a GUI, and I don't let all this other stuff confuse you. Um, we're going to right-click on Start a GUI, Insert Object, and uh, Find Screen GUI. Alright, so let's name this screen GUI um, uh, first person shooter menu, I guess. I don't know what kind of name you guys would want. Alright, so right click on that screen GUI, insert object. Now, I'm not sure how you guys are going to want to design, like maybe if you want to make a frame and then put the frame uh, somewhere on the side, or uh, maybe just insert a text button instead of a frame and position that text button somewhere. I don't know how you guys want, but I'm going to use a frame. I'm going to position my frame how I want it. Um, so you guys can kind of copy me if you guys want. Uh, so I'm just going to mess around with the sizes and stuff. So we're going to work on a uh, button that shows loadout and, and another one that's going to be called settings. And we're going to work with just two buttons, but uh, the one script can uh, handle ev all the, it can handle the everything. Uh, so let's position this on the y-axis. So negative point 0.2. Oh no, I, I got to go positive. Point 0.2. Alright, that's a pretty good position. Alright, I'm just going to change the transparencies just for that alright so we're gonna right click on frame insert object text button alright so how I design my frames uh, how I design my buttons and stuff uh, so I had a invisible button which so let, well, let's change the size first so the size one uh, take that 50 uh, let's do point 0.2. Let's do point 0.3 instead. Oops. Alright. Uh, let's name this. So I said loadout. We're uh, loadout and settings. Uh, loadout. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Alright. So loadout. Uh, let's change the. Let's put text scale. Let's make the text color white. Let's put. Texture transparency 0.8. All right. So how I made it. Oh, also let's go on frame. Change that to one. Okay. Now how I made it was the button. I made it invisible button. So and I made the function uh, fire whenever you hover you hovered over the button. Uh, so there's an even called uh, mouse enter. So that happens whenever you hover over the button. And then I have a uh, a frame, yeah, a frame inside the button, and the frame is what uh, comes out from the left side, and uh, whenever you hover, so the the frame is what moves. So let's just uh, change the size to one. Let's come over here and change this to one also. Okay. Um. Now. We are going to uh, let's let's pos go to the loadout. Let's change the index. 
to 2. So what Zindex is, as you can see, if, uh, it was 1. It's pretty much how it overlays. Like how everything overlays. So if I change the loadout index to 2, the loadout button is going to overlay. So it's going to be on top of the frame. That's what Zindex is. Okay. So let's kind of design this background frame. So I'm going to do 0.5 maybe black now let's go a little point eight alright now if you guys want the lines like those little lines that I had like the orange lines at the top and a line at the bottom how I did that was this I'll, I'll show you alright so on the x-axis we're going to make it one on the y-axis we're going to make it let's go point zero two uh, let's go let's change that to point zero three instead okay uh, now let's let's just change the background color to a blue put zero border size all right let's go to this duplicate this uh this little frame uh, and let's position this to on the y axis position it to one I think I think it should be one. Let me try something. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's one right here. One. Oh. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna make it. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to change this texture color to blue. It looks kind of cartoonish. It doesn't look, really look good, to be honest, in my opinion. Oh well, let's just let's just go with that. Let's just go with that. You guys can design however you want, or you can just copy my GUI the looks of it. Uh. All right. So, um, let's name this frames fine. Actually, the the that doesn't matter. Usually, uh, what I name my frames is like container, uh, like if it was a big frame and then I have a bunch of stuff inside, I usually just name that frame container. But all right, let's get to scripting this. So let's insert our local script inside frame. Insert object local script. All right, local script. All right. So first off, we want to make. Uh, let's do repeat wait. Until game dot players dot local player dot character. Now, if you guys watch my other tutorials, uh, you guys probably see how I always do this in a. I usually always do this in a local script. Well, what this says is it's gonna repeat this. It's gonna repeat this first line, and we just add a wait. So repeat this first line until. Uh, game dot players dot local player dot character. So until it finds the local player's character, which local player is our own player, like the clients, like the client, pretty much. So the client's character. Okay. So now we're going to. Uh, we're not going to access any players or anything. Uh, so what we're going to do is access the the loadout button. So local loadout button equals equals script dot parent dot loadout alright so what is script if you wanna know what script is well script is the actual script we're in right now and then parent is the frame cause it's kinda like a hierarchy so script dot parent dot loadout yeah I spelled that right loadout L O yeah okay okay so we accessed the loadout button we're going to make the settings button after uh, we're just going to script the loadout button first oh and also I forgot to say so the loadout make this frame change the position to let's see what it takes so just kinda mess with the the size I mean the position so we're going to make it go in the negative so to the left dot two oh, wait, eight of point two what's wrong with that something wrong Oh, I see what I did wrong. Oh, because it needs to be a curly bracket. I had removed it. All right, so negative 0.2. Okay, 
Remember, don't be changing the size. Change the position. Five. Oh, that's 45. Uh, nine. All right, so I guess it would be one. So negative one. But I do the, if I were you, I do the same thing like I just did, playing around with the position just to make sure. Um, and also change the text to load out or whatever you guys want. Oh, my goodness. Load out. Change the text to whatever you guys would want. Okay, so let's go back to the script. All right, so we're almost at 12 minutes. Just wanna this 12 minute video is probably gonna take like an hour to upload. I'd upload a lot more if it didn't take that long. Being honest, so uh, a button, a button has a event called mouse enter. So a mouse enter function would fire whenever we put our mouse over the button um, it's gonna take no parameter let's press enter and it should add this parentheses alright so we're going to make a variable up here so local hovering hovering equals false because we're not gonna be hovering uh, we're just gonna set this variable to false um, so once we hover we want to change hovering hovering to true and then we want to check if the just so we don't get an error we want to check if loadout has a frame so if uh, loadout button wait for no let's do find first child find first child uh, frame so frame right here that would be the name inside loadout so whatever the name is right here just change it right here then alright so it's just saying if inside of loadout if there's something called frame and then it's gonna run the code now if there's nothing called frame or whatever you put right here then it, this if statement will not run so now what we're going to do is make a for loop so for i so i is gonna be pretty much like a variable so for i equals loadout <clears throat> loadout button oh I'm forgetting uh because I was thinking about if like you make an FPS game then you need a play button so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make instead of the settings I'm gonna do uh, a play and a loadout so we're going to name this play uh, name this play text all right go back to the local script um, play uh, in the script dot parent dot play we can name it button yeah let's just name button so play button play button <laughs> play button sorry about that guys so for I play button so now we need to get the um, the X the X axis on the position so how a for loop works is you could either do it like two values or you could do it three values so we're gonna be doing it uh, three values so the first value is gonna be the start position second is gonna be the finish and the third is gonna be the increment so the increment is how much it goes up or how much it goes down so we're gonna start on the first value so the start position so pretty much where it's gonna start um now I said uh, yeah okay where it's gonna start and where it's okay I'm tripping right now so let's get it where it starts so we're gonna go play button dot background dot position no not background play, play okay play button dot fr I'm tripping oh uh, okay let's copy this line this line and then paste it right here and then we do dot position dot x dot scale okay so what this is we're not finished with this uh this for loop thing so what we're doing is we're going to uh, play button we're finding frame and then we go in the position and then we get x and then there's scale so scale is the very first value which is this right here the negative one so what it's saying is the it's gonna start at negative one which it is right now 
then we're going to go to the goal. So the goal should be, I feel like I'm kind of stuttering. So the goal would be zero because whenever it's zero, it's, you know, in the right position. So control Z, okay. Uh, so zero, comma, and then we have our increment. So the lower the number, the slower it's going to go, like the slower it's going to take. Okay, so then you add the do and then it should add the in. Alright, so now we're going to make it another if statement. So this might confuse you guys. So we're going to check if not hovering, then break. So what this is saying is if, alright, so if I took out this not, uh, it says if hovering, so it's saying if hovering is equal to true, then break which we don't want to check if hovering is equal to true we're, so that's why we add we change the boolean by adding not all right so let's go outside that if statement all right so now we're going to be changing the actual position so play button um we can actually just copy this right here i should have just made a variable but it's all good okay dot position equals u dim oh my gosh I cannot type u dim two dot new so what u dim two dot new is um it's kind of like another version of vector three dot new so vector three dot new is whenever you have like in a part there's um three values there's uh the x the y and the z but on GYs they don't have a z axis there's only x and y so this is just used for uh, GYs, the UDM2. Alright, so now um, we're going to put the position in. So we're going to put I, 0, 0, 0. So what this is saying is I is the um, variable we have right here. And I is going to be the thing that's going to like make it um, move on the x-axis which is from left to right so if you guys wanna you could just add a weight right here but the fastest uh, weight you could do is called uh, render stepped so we're going to do game get service run sir my god service yeah, run service dot render steps weight so this is the fastest weight and uh, render step only works in local scripts if you didn't know so we're going to test this out okay I see what I did wrong play button oh no that's the text hold up gotta change the name play button Oh man, I'm trying to hurry. We're almost at 20 minutes. It's going to be a long video. There we go. Pretty cool, but we're not finished. <laughs> Sadly. Okay. So now what we're going to do is make the the mouse leaf. All right. So change this to mouse leaf. Uh now we're going to set the variable so whenever we our mouse leaves, it's going to be hovering equals false. So this is whenever this comes in. So if not hovering, so if hovering is equal to false, that's pretty much what it's saying, then it's going to break. So every time um, this GY like moves to the right, whenever we hover, uh, it's going to check this if statement. So every time like this for loop runs right here, it's going to check this if statement. Uh, so this if statement is just saying uh, to break whenever hovering is equal to false. Uh, and that's on the mouse leave so uh, what we need to do is set this position right here back to the original position whenever we leave so uh, depending on right now this let's see the frame how we have it at negative one that's what you're gonna put right here so negative 
one. Now you guys' position might be different, uh, but yeah, mine is negative one. And then we change this to negative uh, point zero two. Now I'm gonna change it uh, the two to a five over here on both of them. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Oh nope, we have to change this. Um, so now it's gonna check if hovering, then it's gonna break. Alright, let's see what happens. Amazing. It's amazing. Alright, so what we're going to do, like I said, I would end the video right now, but. Alright, guys. So, um. Now let's change the name from play button to, I think I had said loadout. Loadout. Yeah, loadout button. And then just change this to load out. I'm so sorry about that, uh, the FPS tutorial and stuff. But, you know, I can't expose my friend's framework like that. That's, that's pretty rude. Pretty rude. Alright, let's change this to a 1. Okay, that's way down. Uh, just kind of mess with the position. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do this like that. No, actually, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. No, I'm gonna bring it down one more. Okay, so we go to the local script. Zoom out a little. All right, so I'm gonna. We're gonna make another variable. Um, let's name it load out button. Copy this paste it right here alright so we're gonna copy both of these functions uh, we don't wanna copy that uh, hovering though the hovering variable and then paste it over here now we're just gonna make a bunch of these commas just to split it apart you know so you guys don't get confused uh, come copy this loadout button paste it right here paste it right here um, I'm gonna paste right here, paste right here, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, paste right here, you know. Alright, so paste here, paste here, paste here. Yeah. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Alright. Hmm. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Um so to fix this, we could uh we can just make another variable. So copy that variable, come paste it over here. We're gonna name it hovering two. Copy that. Uh, or you don't have to copy, just add two over here. So hovering two. So everywhere you see hovering, you just put a two after it. So hovering two, hovering two. I think that's it. All right. Right, you see how it's kind of glitching, like, hmm. What you could do is, if that keeps happening, um, take these frames, both both frames, and position it uh, negative one, and then just add like, so negative one point three. I'll do. So if you change it to that, then you need to go back in your script. And wherever you had negative one, do or whatever you had, do add whatever you just did. So uh, neg negative one point three. So on the mouse leave function. So both of the mouse leave functions, you change it there. All right, let's let's check and see what it does. Works better. Amazing. All right. So. That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, pretty long tutorial. I did not make this. This is a free model. This thing. Um, and also about a car tutorial. Uh, I had a request on that, but thing is, I created the car with uh, springs. Thanks for a YouTube video. But I cannot get the car to go. I don't know why. I don't know why it's not accelerating. I don't know. Maybe the strings are too the springs are too weak. I don't know. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.